Welcome to the 10 Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil. And just the other day, I received a question from a church about setting up users and their roles in QuickBooks Online. So I'm guessing, I'm not totally for sure, but I'm guessing this church went to TechSoup and got the QuickBooks Online Plus version. So the Plus version, it's $75 a year. And if you don't know how to do that, I'll put a link in the description to a post I did on that earlier. So you all right, so here I am on the dashboard for QuickBooks Online. And if you go over to this gear and then to manage users, by the way, um, I'm using this highlight thing. I don't know if it helps or not, or maybe it's just annoying. Either way, I'm using it. It comes with Power Toys. So that's an app that you can download. And then whenever you double tap the control key, it'll highlight it and you can go ahead and highlight stuff. So I don't know if that's annoying or not. Um, I'll try to use it wisely. So here is my two users that I have set up. So I'm currently logged in as this primary admin, and then I have my Gmail account set up and it, you can see it's, it has a different role. So I'll show you first how to add somebody. So if you haven't had anybody added, there are these different roles. So you put in their name and their email address, and then you select their role. And there are these role descriptions here. And they say these ones count towards your limit. So if you have QuickBooks Online Plus, you have a limit of five users and they could be in any of these categories. So admin is the one that can add and remove um, users. And then they have less and less access as you go down. But then there's some of these non-billable roles, which are important. So if you do use this to track time for hourly employees, uh, that doesn't count against you. Or if you have employees or maybe a finance committee that needs to see the reports and you don't want to have them always come to you to run the reports, you could just set them up as a user and it doesn't count towards your limit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit done here. Uh, the one nice thing too is if you look at this, um, you'll see you can click on one and you can see right away what access they have. So it says full access to sales and expenses and inventory um, lists and reports and time tracking, partial access to the company information. You could view it, but you can't edit it. So you could decide whether or not you want to allow them to view the, the um, users or the subscription. And then these are these per permissions that they have no access to. So they can't see the chart of accounts or do the bank rec or journal entries. Um, they So let's go ahead and, and look at it. I have one set up already, like I said, on Gmail. And by default, it comes up, if you're not the admin, it comes up in this view. And I really don't like this view because I'm an accountant. So there is this accountant view. And if you go to that, that's what I'm used to. I'm not sure that's helpful for non-accountants, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back. So switch back to business view. And what you're gonna see here is I have access to pretty much everything, except for when I go here, you could see I can't do a bank deposit. I can't do a transfer. I can't do journal entries. I can't pay down my credit card. So, but everything else I have access to. So it's not bad, even if I tried to click on it, it says, nope, tough. Well, it says we're sorry. I don't think they're really sorry, by the way. But I can do pretty much everything else. I can invoice my customers. I can um, record payments. I can receive payments, um, pay bills, uh, set up vendors, all that kind of stuff. So it's it. I have almost full access, but then again, you'd have it a little bit separate. So that way you could have somebody else do like the bank rec or somebody else do the journal entries. All right, let me go ahead and go back. So I was in the middle of setting up a user here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and edit this and change it to uh, view company reports. So all it will give me is view company reports. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. It's going to take a little bit. Uh, what's my experience? So far, all right. 
All right. I don't know how quickly this is going to take effect. Let's go ahead and click on something and maybe I have to lock out and log back in. I'm going to go ahead and So I logged out and then logged back in with my Gmail and it goes right to the screen. So you could see that all I could see are my reports. And I have full access to all reports. So I can look at journal entries, I can look at it, but here, let me show you what happens when I click on it. Normally what would happen is that you would, um, you would be able to click on these and to drill in deeper. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back over to this one and I'll go to reports. And I'll go to my journal entries one was the one that I was looking at. Our general ledger is what I was looking at. I, and here I could go ahead and I could I, I could click on that, and it would get me all the way into the transactional detail, so I can see the transactional detail. So we set up a payment system, and they transferred in twenty three cents. Anyway, so that is the limitation. You can see the transactions, but you can't see all the details. So, but still, if I wanted to know. Let's say I was a finance committee and I wanted to see the statement of activities. So I wanted to see how we're doing or I wanted to see the budget report or maybe um, if you set up custom reports. So let's say you set up a report for each staff person so they could see their budget. You could go ahead and have all those set up so that they could run those. Um, so it is pretty slick. And again, this, this user does not count against your total number. So you could have... Um, I, there, there probably is a limit, but I'm not sure what it is. But it, I could see how this would be super helpful for a church. One last thing I wanted to show you before I end this video is you're going to have multiple users in there. So how do you know who did what? So that might be a concern. You're not always going to see a paper trail necessarily. So if you go to reports... And if you go right, actually right here, audit log is what it's called. Audit log. And you can see everything that's been done for this month. And I'm the only one that does anything in here right now. But you could see whenever they sign in, whenever they sign out, uh, you could see that I edited a user. So that was just what I did today. You can see the online stuff that it just happens and it records when it happens. Um, you can see all the transactions that I record and if I were to edit any. So there is a log. So that should provide some kind of assurance as well. So if you if you have questions, so who recorded that? Well, you can go ahead and look right here and it'll show you. All right, so we looked at QuickBooks Online, how exactly you assign the roles and what those roles mean, but now to the heart of the question. So who should have what role? And I've worked with a lot of different churches, so I know there's variety in how churches are organized, but here's what I typically see. So there's a finance committee, so some kind of committee that is responsible for overseeing that the finances are running smoothly. You probably have various committees over worship and so the finance committee, the committee chairs, and the staff, I would just give them view company reports access. So that's the role I would give them. And this doesn't count against your five if you're on QuickBooks Online Plus. But that way, especially your committee chairs and their staff, they could look and see where they are in their budgets. So that's the main thing. You set up some custom reports for them. So that way they just have to click on worship committee and then they see their budget, you know, and they see how they're doing. The next one that I thought just made sense is to set up your financial secretary. So that's the donation person as standard limited customer only. So that way they're only able to look at the revenue side of things. So they're able to record everything. They're able to keep the donor records right there in QuickBooks. And that's assuming that that's the way you're doing it. If you're not keeping the donor records in QuickBooks, I don't know if I would give this person access. But if you are, and I do have a link for how to do that too, I will put that all right, so here's where it gets a little bit messy because, again, there's the most variety here in how churches are organized. So whoever your IT person is, so assuming that they're 
related to the church and they're reliable, um, I would give make that person the company admin. So and and that person very well could be your treasurer. I know I filled that role a number of times. It could be your finance person. Um, who knows? It could be your trustee. So it could be on one of your committees. But whoever that. All right. I hope that helped. That was just my two cents on this. Um, one last recommendation is when you do your annual audit, make sure you double check these roles again, because sometimes we, we, we tend to get a little bit lax, like we make an exception and then we forget to undo that exception. So that's my two cents. If you have other questions or ideas for future videos, leave them in the comments. I love to hear them. Until next time, God bless.